Hi guys, in this video we'll look at an introduction to lipids, the structure of triglycerides, ester bonding in condensation, ester bonding in hydrolysis, and then we'll finish with a summary. So lipids are another family of very important organic molecules which we use in the body. They're organic molecules because they contain a lot of carbon, like proteins and carbohydrates, and lipids come in two main types that we find in the body. There are triglycerides and there are phospholipids. We'll go through the detailed structure of each of these, but a triglyceride normally looks like this, with one molecule here and then three parts coming off at the end. And the other type is called a phospholipid, with its distinguishing feature being this phosphate group lying on the end. Because there are two types of lipid, the triglycerides and the phospholipids have different but both important roles. Triglycerides are more used as a source of energy. We can find them in a variety of foods that we eat, for example, oily foods and butter, and certain fats as well. And oils found in various plants too, and they're used to provide us with energy. On the other hand, phospholipids aren't used for energy so much, they're used more for a structural role in building up the cell membranes. And the membranes that surround the cell act as the kind of barrier to the outside world. And the main component making up this layer is called a phospholipid. So lipids themselves, whether we're talking about triglycerides or phospholipids, are mainly composed of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and there is some oxygen thrown in there as well. So it mainly has the same elements as carbohydrates. So we can see that there's lots of carbon across the chain of the molecule. There's evidence of hydrogen, and there's some oxygen as well, although the oxygen is a lot less common. We tend to see this long chain of carbons and hydrogens, and this is known as a hydrocarbon chain. So hydrocarbon chains are often found in these lipid structures. And at the end, we have different groups depending on the different lipids. They're very large, complex molecules, so we call them macromolecules, with macro meaning large, but they are not polymers. So when we talk about polysaccharides, or proteins, and nucleic acids, we tend to say that they're polymers made up of multiple units known as monomers. But in this case, for lipids, they're not polymers because each of the units is not a monomer. It's simply a long, complex molecule but it doesn't have individual units you can break it down into. We also describe lipids as being non-polar molecules, and so if we were to add them to water, they will not dissolve in the water. So polar molecules are able to dissolve in the water and mix into the water to make a solution. If they're non-polar, then they're unable to make any connection with the water molecules in water. So the oil and the water never actually mix. You can sort of swirl it around and get bubbles, but they will eventually form two separate layers as they want to stay well away from each other. So let's talk about the molecular structure of triglycerides. And remember, these are the types of lipids we use to give ourselves a source of energy. A triglyceride molecule is formed from one molecule of a compound called glycerol, and it's connected to three fatty acids. So you can look at the name and work this out because tri means three, and the glyceride refers to the glycerol. So there's three fatty acids for a glycerol molecule. So looking at this triglyceride molecule, the red structure represents a glycerol, just one molecule, and these three chains represent three fatty acids. And these look very much like the long carbon chains we saw in the previous slide. So let's talk about each of these components. The glycerol is an organic alcohol, and it has three hydroxyl groups, or OH groups, on its side. So an alcohol is any time where you have a carbon chain which has these OH groups attached to it. And glycerol in particular is three carbons long, one, two, three, and therefore it has three hydroxyl groups along it. So this is the glycerol. The fatty acids, and remember there are three of them for this triglyceride, are organic acids, so they're able to lower the pH of things. They have a carboxyl group, or a COOH group, on one end, and that end is joined to a hydrocarbon tail. So it's called, in general, a carboxylic acid. So let's break this down on the molecule. We've got this long chain of carbons and hydrogens. This is the hydrocarbon tail, made purely of carbons and hydrogens joined up. Now you might think this looks like a polymer, but it's not, because it doesn't have the same units repeating itself. We have this end, which is different. Here we have this end, which is the carboxyl group. And a carboxyl group always has a carbon, joins to one oxygen, and then another oxygen and an OH. So it's COOH. So the COOH group is joined to the hydrocarbon tail. And overall, this is acidic, and it's called a carboxylic acid. 
Often we don't tend to draw out the whole hydrocarbon chain, we use the letter R to represent the hydrocarbon chain. So this is exactly the same thing as the one above, only this time we've got the carboxyl group on the end as before, but we've turned the hydrocarbon tail, instead of being infinitely long and full of detail, we've just decided to name it R. This saves space and time in the long run. So looking at the molecule in more detail, we need to talk about the ester bond. So the triglyceride molecule is formed when we join one molecule of glycerol to those three fatty acids, and we do this through condensation reactions. So remember the triglyceride has those two components. We have the glycerol joined to three fatty acids, and as these get joined, they form the triglyceride. And this type of reaction is known as condensation. Condensation is seen in lots of reactions in the body where we're joining things together. In a condensation reaction, it forms water, because if you think about condensation on the side of a glass bottle or on the mirror, it's where water droplets begin to form. So the reaction itself forms the water because one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms get removed from the glycerol and fatty acid. So let's take that in the forms of a diagram. Here we've got our glycerol molecule, and then we've got one of these fatty acids approaching the glycerol, and remember the R represents this long chain of hydrocarbons. So in order to join the fatty acid to the glycerol, and remember this will happen three times, we need to remove certain atoms to make way for this. And what we do is we remove an H and an OH from both of these groups. So overall, we've got two H's removed and an O, so we form H2O, and this goes off and leaves. And obviously this is a molecule of water. So in condensation, two things are joined with the removal of water. And the particular bond that's formed between the glycerol and the fatty acid is what we call an ester bond. So now if we look at this structure, the glycerol has now got this connection with the fatty acid, and this is called the ester bond. And remember, the molecule of water which was formed has now left as a product. So what we have here is we have glycerol joined to one fatty acid, and we call this a monoglyceride. And hopefully you can see that with three of these, we would have a triglyceride. Two would obviously be a diglyceride. So by definition, an ester bond is the covalent bond formed by a condensation reaction between the OH group of a carboxylic acid and the OH group of an alcohol. So looking back up, we used the OH group of the alcohol, which was on the glycerol, and the H or the OH on the fatty acid, and now they're formed together to make a covalent bond, which is this ester bond. So in order to make the triglyceride, we need three condensation reactions forming three molecules of water. So here again we have our total glycerol molecule, and then on the right here we have three individual fatty acids, also known as carboxylic acids, and you can see this carboxyl group for each of them, and the R representing a chain of carbons and hydrogens. And every time we want to make one of these ester bonds, we remove water for each molecule coming together. So overall, we form three water molecules, and we'll have a triglyceride with three ester bonds. And therefore the end product as a triglyceride has three ester bonds connecting one glycerol molecule to three fatty acids. And there are three. In forming ester bonds, we used a condensation reaction. And breaking them down, we use something called a hydrolysis reaction. So the triglycerides can be broken down into glycerol and three fatty acids, which are the components which make them up, in three hydrolysis reactions. So now we're going backwards, where we have the glycerol, three fatty acids, and this whole component is the triglyceride. And in breaking this down into its individual components of glycerol and the three fatty acids, this overall reaction is known as hydrolysis. So condensation is forming, hydrolysis is breaking. So in order to do this, in order to break these three bonds, we need three molecules of water because three oxygen atoms and six hydrogen atoms are going to be added to the triglyceride. So we've got this triglyceride structure here, and we've got three ester bonds linking it all up. In order to separate these, we need to add back some of those atoms that were taking away in its formation. So in the condensation, water was removed every time we formed an ester bond. This time, in order to break them, we need to put the water back in. So we're going to put H2O in for every single ester bond we plan to break down. 
so we're going to need three water molecules. In the process, this breaks the three ester bonds, forming the glycerol molecule again, and the three fatty acids. So by adding back that water, we reformed particular atoms on all of these molecules, so that each of those fatty acids are now reformed, and we've ended up with three fatty acids. And we've now got a reformed molecule of glycerol, which is this alcohol molecule that has three OH groups. So now we've reformed the reactants which form the triglyceride. So here's just a table to summarize the two types of reactions we can have. Condensation is where we form triglycerides. So glycerol and three fatty acids get joined together in making a triglyceride. It forms three molecules of water and it creates three ester bonds. In hydrolysis, the glycerol and three fatty acids are broken apart and reformed. This requires the input of three molecules of water and it breaks three ester bonds. With any molecule like a carbohydrate or protein, if you get confused between these, try and remember that hydrolysis is broken down into two parts. Lysis means to break, so we're breaking the triglyceride into its two components, and hydro means water, which means that we need water in order to break these things apart. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.